So today I'm gonna go ahead and load test all of these DeWalt batteries. Of course on the load cells like normal, and then we'll go ahead and tear them down, see what cells are running internally and how the circuitry looks and determine if those power stacks are truly the winners here. Now I load tested each battery at five, 15 and 30 amps. I'm not gonna make you watch all this, but of course, like normal, I use the load cells here with an adapter. The only thing when we came to do the five amp hour power stack, things got a little more tricky. If the battery doesn't see communication with a tool, then the battery actually shuts off power. So to do this, I modified an adapter here so we can have a drill plugged in. We also have to have the drill just slightly running to keep electronics happy. That way we can draw that 30 amps with the two load testers here. When we look at the runtime data on this chart, yeah, it's pretty much what you would expect there. Nothing real out of the ordinary. As the amp hours climb, the battery does last longer under load. But now when we look at voltage drop, I took a reading at two seconds, five seconds, and 10 seconds under that 30 amp load. Yeah, you can definitely see some differences here. When we look at those two power stacks, the 1.7 and then the five power stack, they do stand out here. With the 1.7, we don't see anywhere near that performance until you get into a four amp hour XR battery. And the five amp hour, we don't see anywhere near that performance until you get into that nine to 12 amp hour flex volt battery. But overall that 15 amp hour still packs a punch there holding the voltage the longest under load. It is interesting to see the battery's temperature. I did take this with a thermal camera, but one thing I will note here, this was at when the battery completed the 30 amp run. That being said, the power stacks, yeah, did quite well. So let's take a look at cells, new old generation, and also the flex volts. So here we have that 1.5 amp hour. So they look to be 10 power. And if we're going off the pack here, they are made in China. DC B203, now this is running 18650s. These are LG cells. And they are the HD2s. Again, this is two amp hours. The older generation four amp hour here is running the same LG cells. The DCB205 here, older generation, five amp hour, 18650s, Samsung 25Rs. Newer generation, same cells. Some of you notice the profile's a little bit wider and the configuration from the old to the new is quite different packaging wise. Definitely on top with the circuitry, small circuit board, larger circuit board integrated with the LED on the front there and the button. DCB 204, the updated four amp hour. Now this is different than the older four amp hour. Now this is running Samsung 18650s, but here we're looking at 20 hours, whereas the five amp hour has 25 hours. And you can see the difference there between circuitry on the older generation with LG versus the newer generation with Samsung. Six amp hour here, 21700s. Newer case, kind of some older style circuitry there. Running LG cells, H30As. Flex volt, six amp hour here. 18650s, Samsung 20Ss. You can see those right there. DCB203, three amp hour, 21700 cells. Now these are Samsung 30T cells there. And of course, five of them. Nine amp hour, flex volt. 21700s again, just like the three amp hour. But in this scenario, we're looking at 15 30T cells. The DCB240, the go to four amp hour here, 21700s, five cells, 
Samsung 40Ts. Same exact cells here in the 8 amp hour. Of course, here there are 10 of them. And then when we look at the 12 amp hour, 21700, so same Samsung 40Ts. But in this case, it's using 15 of them instead of, of course, 5 or 10 to achieve that 12 amp hours. Here you can clearly tell why these flex volts are so expensive. I mean, the assembly on these must take quite a bit of time versus a normal battery pack. In the 15 amp hour, I can't tear it all the way down. I do not have the long tamper-proof torques there. But just by pulling the side cover here, we can take a peek in there. And we can see Samsung INR 18650s. Now in this case, they are 25Ss. And there is actually 30 of them stacked vertically here in this battery. We'll tear apart the power stacks. Definitely a difference in electronics from the 1.7 to the 5 amp hour there. And this has a plastic cover over that circuit board there. Everything else is sealed up pretty well. Again, it is a pouch cell battery. Definitely interesting to see the difference in the design from the 1.7 to the 5 amp hour. So here's a table I put together with all those batteries and their corresponding cells. For the most part, uh, most of the battery packs are running Samsung. And only two of the current generation are running LG. That 4 amp hour XR, that was the older generation there. The newer generation, again, is running Samsung. And the 1.5 here is running 10 power. So overall, nothing real shocking to me here. Of course, as we gained more cells, we also gained a lower voltage drop which would lead to higher performance if the tool can use the amperage. Now the flex volts, yeah, definitely held the voltage the longest, but you've also got to remember that's a ton of weight right here. Whereas the power stacks for the most part are pretty compact and lightweight. Now when we talk this five amp hour power stack again, for that voltage drop, you'd have to be running a nine or even the 12 to be comparable. So taking the nine amp hour here, three pounds, four ounces, versus the power stack, one pound, 10 ounces. So quite a bit less. Yes, the amp hour is not the same, but when you're looking for just performance to weight, the five amp hour does win that battle. But currently the 15 amp hour definitely gives you the lowest voltage drop. I'm sure we're probably gonna get this in either a eight or even maybe a 10 amp hour setup. It'd be really interesting to come back and test that voltage drop under load. And maybe I go ahead and tie two five amp hour power stacks together and give whatever drill we get on the dyno the fullest possible potential available. Now, do I care for the footprint? Not at all compared to the 1.7. I mean, you could have extended this 1.7 down and got yourself a 3.4. So 3.4, about that size. Hopefully you found this video useful. It's definitely interesting to see under a 30 amp load, the voltage drop and which batteries do perform better. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you on the next one.